In my first presentation on the scalar product of two vectors, I asked the question, what sort of product might we make from two vectors? I answered that question indirectly by saying that it ought to reflect the applications that we might need to make with those vectors. As a result, I came up with the form of the product shown here. I wrote it with a dot and called it the scalar or dot product. It consists of the product of the lengths of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. That quantity is just a product of numbers, so it's a scalar quantity. And for that reason we call this product the scalar product. I did also comment near the end of the last presentation that this is not the only product we can make with two vectors. We'll come back to the other kind of product at another time, but for the moment I want to look at this product again. Another comment I made at the end of the last presentation was that sometimes we don't know the angle between the two vectors, and for that reason this form for the product is not always all that convenient. In this second presentation on the subject, I want to discuss how we would write this product in terms of the components of the two vectors. So, let's start by writing down the two vectors, a and b, expressing them with their components. In the component description, we imagine a three-dimensional frame of axes all at right angles to each other, rather like the corner of a square-shaped room. We call i the unit vector, that is, a vector with length 1, pointing in the x direction. j is the unit vector in the y direction, and k, at right angles to both, is the unit vector upwards in the z direction. Let's write down that all of these vectors i, j and k have length 1. We will soon need that property. In the meantime, we can now write our two vectors as a sum of components in the i, j and k directions. We call those respectively a1, a2, a3 for a and b1, b2, b3 for b. I'm now going to write down an expression for the dot product between a and b using the component forms shown here. I'm writing a dot b and now I'm going to substitute a and b with the forms shown using i, j and k just above. This is what it looks like. We can expand this product using the usual method of bracket multiplication. a1, a2, a3, b1, b2, b3 are just numbers, so we can multiply them together and pull them to the front of each expression. That will give us altogether nine terms involving dot products between the various i, j's and k's. It will look like this. In each of the nine terms, I've put some green parentheses around the actual dot product of two vectors. All the other parts in each term are just the multiplications of the components, a1, b1, a1, b3, a3, b2, and so on. At first sight, this looks like it's going to be rather messy and complicated. But by thinking about the dot products in the green parentheses, we can simplify this expression significantly. Let's start with i dot i. Remember, the dot product says that we take the magnitude of each vector and multiply those together, and then multiply by the cosine of the angle between. But here, the vectors are the same, they're both i, and so the angle between them is 0 degrees. The cosine of 0 is actually 1. What's more, i was originally defined to be a unit vector, so its length is also 1. That means we get 1 times 1 times 1 for this dot product. The answer is just 1. We have discovered that i dot i is equal to 1. But now think about it. j dot j and k dot k will work exactly the same way. The angle between j and itself will again be 0, and the length of j is 1. Similarly for k. So that means that in fact j dot j and k dot k must also be 1, without really having to do any more work. In a minute, we can replace those three dot products with 1, 
in the long, tedious expression above. Before we do that, let's look at the mixed products, such as i.j. i.j will be the length of i times the length of j times the cosine of the angle between, but that is now 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is 0, so i.j must be 0. But then i is at right angles to k, and j is at right angles to k as well. So in all those cases, we'll get cos of 90 degrees, and the dot product will come to 0. That will actually account for all the other six dot products in our messy expression. Let's write all that out. There they are. All six of those dot products are equal to zero. That means we can cross out the corresponding terms in our original dot product of a dot b. Let's go back and do that. And let's also mark the dot products which are one. So here we go. I'm going to cross out all the mixed dot products. That's i dot j, i dot k, j dot k, k dot j, j dot i and k dot i. They're all zero. They all disappear. That leaves just three terms. It leaves i dot i, which is 1, j dot j, which is 1, and k dot k, which is 1. Look at the coefficients. That's a1 b1 times 1 plus a2 b2 times 1 plus a3, b3 times 1. So finally we can write out the full expression for our dot product and it's not so bad after all. a dot b is a1 b1 times 1, which I won't write, plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. And that is the most convenient component form for the dot product. To demonstrate how useful this is, I'm going to finish off with an explicit example in which we know the values of a1 to a3 and b1 to b3. So let me now write down two vectors a and b with some numbers for components. Here are an a and a b that I've made up. Notice that b has no j component. We think of that as 0j when we do the dot product. Let's now use the formula above to write out the dot product of a dot b. All we've got to do is to multiply the corresponding numbers. So the a1 and the b1 are 2 and 6. So that's 2 lots of 6. The a2 and the b2. a2 has 1j, so that's plus 1. And b2 is 0 because there's no j. And finally, a3 and b3. Notice b3 is negative. That simplifies to 12, subtract 15, and the answer is negative 3. I'm going to call it a day there. Then I'm going to move on and do a third presentation in which I'll talk a little bit about some of the properties of the dot product and finish by showing how it can be used to find the angle between two vectors as long as we know the components. That solves the problem that we mentioned earlier, that sometimes we don't know the angle.